Hello, welcome back to the Parker's Couch. Thank you for tuning in and making your way to the third and final part of our P. Diddy lawsuit. The Lil Rod Jones most recent lawsuit, 73 page lawsuit against P. Diddy that led to his home being raided. We have been going through the lawsuit if this is your first time joining us. Remember, I am no lawyer. I have no kind of law background or anything. I'm just reading the lawsuit as a layperson, sharing it with you for people who don't have time to read it themselves and just kind of want to hear what's in there. And today, you know, I offered little short opinions and stuff throughout. I will give my final kind of thoughts, you know, just from my opinion, just from what I read on paper. And, you know, you just chime in with your thoughts and things as well. But as always, if this is your first time joining us, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This is the Parker's Couch. And on YouTube, we... Or now kind of molding my brother and I, we both um, have this platform and we're going to mold it to do more reviews and things of that nature. I'm going to be doing new stories um, during the week and things that are really catching my attention. And right now it's been P. Diddy for sure. And we also have a podcast that's on major platforms. So check it out. It's released weekly. Every now and then we might release a special episode or something during the week, but typically on Mondays or Tuesdays, it was released on all platforms, the Parker's couch. And we just, we love everything, sports, television, entertainment, reality. We love it all. So our couch is open to various discussion. So just join us and chime in. And as always put in the comments of things you're thinking. So we left off going through the cause of actions point of the lawsuit. And I mentioned last time that I probably should have looked up what exactly is a cause of action. And I wasn't too far off. And pretty much I was pretty spot on. So give you the legal definition. What is cause of action? Cause of action is the legal claim a claim that sometimes goes unstated that allows a party to seek judicial relief. This gives the legal right to seek a remedy because of the act or mission, failure to perform duty or breach of obligation of the defendant towards the plaintiff. So right now we're in the part of the lawsuit where it's going through all the causes of actions. So these are all the specific things they are picking out to sue the defendants for. And we left off on number seven. So I'm going to pick it up with number eight. And with the cause of actions, since it is rehashing a lot of things that were stated earlier, some things do go in a little bit more detail. I'm not reading these straight through. I will just give you what the cause of action is for some of it and talk about it briefly. And others, I would read at certs whenever we get some more detailed information into what is being alleged. So let's pick it up with the eighth cause of action. And the eighth cause of action is California premise liability inadequate or negligent security. And this is against um, the defendant, defendants love records, Motown records, universal music group, Chalice Recording Studios and Sean Combs. If you remember in Chalice, the Chalice Recording Studio shooting that took place of Mr. G, we talked about that in the previous two. Um, In this part of the cause of action, they're suing for negligence on basis of the security because, you know, they shouldn't have been able to get in there with guns for this action to take place. So it goes more into that and into the the safety. Specifically, I read this part of the claim where the plaintiff is trying to get some judgment. It's on these general issues. So it reads, as a further approximate result of the negligence of defendants plaintiff has incurred and will continue to incur medical and related expenses in an amount according to proof. Wherefore, plaintiff Pray for judgment against defendants and each of them as follows. General damages, according to proof, for actual medical expenses incurred, for future medical expenses, according to proof, for loss of earning, 
for interest according to law for cost of suit incurred herein and for such other and further relief as the court may deem just and proper so as long as they can prove it that he would as long as they can prove their case in this area he's going to get money for all these things which that's going to add up to a, a and a, a good amount right there now it's all based upon the burden of proof the night cause of action Aiden abetting and inducing a sex trafficking venture in violation of the trafficking victims protection act so we get more into the sex trafficking claims that are going to be in these preceding um cause of actions coming up so here we go more in detail with all of the the defendants this is against lucian charles grange ethiopia habertamarium mountain records motown records i mean love records and universal groups so I'm, I'm sorry not all the defendants so this is all this particular one is just of everyone that was surrounding puffy but not p diddy himself in this particular part of the cause of that of action so it's labeling all these people as co-conspirators and saying that they benefited financially received things of value from their participation in the comb sex, sex trafficking venture including payments and other compensation compensation from mr combs the co-conspirators who benefited financially include defendants justin combs kk if you remember christina karam and her direct reports Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond. So they bring them into this seat suit as well, saying that they all benefited off of the sex trafficking ring that was going on here. And it goes into some more parts detailing parts of it, some legal stuff um, that is mentioned that we I won't read because I won't even know what I'm reading <laughs> if I'm reading that. But some other elements. It goes by aiding, abetting, and inducing Mr. Combs and his co-conspirators sex trafficking ventures and sex trafficking a plaintiff. The defendants and our direct um, direct reports, both financially and by receiving things of value from participating in Combs uh, sex trafficking venture. So they benefited financially and they received other things of value apparently in this. It goes on to say that the co-conspirators allegedly, you know, they were co-conspirators of sexual abuse, sex trafficking, conspiracy to recruit, solicit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain, and provide Mr. Jones as well as others into commercial sex acts through the means of force, threats of force, fraud, abuse of process, and coercion. So defendants knew and should have known that Mr. Combs had engaged in, in acts in violation of the TVPA. And that's the trafficking, um, the trafficking Victims Protection Act, TVPA. Look at that, I'm learning, learning something. And, and so it goes on and it's, it's, it's repetitive and we it's repetitive of the things of that they apparently aided and abetted in terms of sex trafficking so heavy charges there we're going to go to the 10th cause of action which is titled n i n i e d for sexual assault so i did look that up and basically n e i d i'm sorry it's n e i d and it stands for negligent infliction of emotional distress and that's defined as emotional distress caused by negligent action. So states differ greatly as to when they allow a cause of action for NEID and exactly how damages are calculated, unlike intentional infliction of emotional distress, which we will get to that coming up. But in this one, it's, it's just saying that the, the defendants is jane doe number one if you remember jane doe number one being young miami's cousin so this is specifically towards her if you recall we shared how on that thanksgiving day whenever she apparently tried to suck mr jones penis 
in the bathroom and then try to engage in set sats unwanted in front of others. So this apparently caused unreasonable risk of causing emotional distress to the plaintiff. And Jane Doe, number one, knew or should have known that such conduct was likely to result in emotional distress that might or likely would cause illness or bodily harm. So the plaintiff's emotional distress was foreseeable to Jane Doe. That's the claim. And as a direct and proximate result of the negligent conduct of Jane Doe, number one, the plaintiff suffered and will continue to suffer severe emotional distress. John, Jane Doe's number one's conduct was malicious, willful, and or cruel, entitling the planet, the plaintiff to punitive damages. And as we said here, as the we read the definition, this one seems a little bit tougher to prove, and it seems like it varies state by state. So I'm wondering in the state where this is. I think this happened, if I remember in the story, it happened in the state of Florida. Yes. So I wonder what their guidelines are. And that will determine a lot with that one. So there's an 11th cause of action that's also an N. Well, they say N I E D, and but the other words label it N E I D. I guess it's the same thing. But so in this cause, it's specifically against P. Diddy where he is repeats the same thing p diddy should have been aware of the emotional risks that was gonna that could happen with the plaintiff it should have been a thing that he could for, foresee the emotional distress that this was going to cause and is negligent upon his part to inflict this emotional distress upon mr jones so now the 12th cause of action the IIED, so this is the intentional infliction of emotional distress. This is also claims 12 and 13, they would go against young Miami's cousin and also against P. Diddy. So not on, only was are they saying it was negligent infliction of emotional distress, but they're also claiming that it's intentional infliction of emotional distress. So a IIED occurs when a person through extreme or outrageous behavior intentionally or recklessly causes severe emotional distress, mental trauma, and or bodily harm to another. There's, and it also says there need not be bodily harm to establish this tort. So even if you don't have any physical bodily harm, you still can make this claim if it's intentional. So it says that Jane Doe, number one, engaged in conduct toward the plaintiff that is extreme and outrageous to exceed the bonds of decency in a civilized society, subjecting him to sexual assault and misconduct. So it's saying that everything that took care was extreme and outrageous. And when you get to the 13th cause that's against Diddy, it's saying the exact same thing, calling it extreme and outrageous behavior that shocks the conscience. And these actions were taken with the intent to cause or disregard for the substantial probability of causing severe emotional distress. It's going to be interesting if can prove both of these so i wonder if that one varies state by state too as well just like the nied so now we're on to the 14th cause of action and this reads knowing beneficiary in a sex trafficking venture in violation of the trafficking victims protection act and this one goes into some more detail because it realleges what was said in the first one you know that we just read a little bit ago and it provides a little bit more information and we'll get to some of that let me skip around here because there's a lot of sections there's so many sections within this cause of action and so it says here one one alleges that mr combs was providing vast sums of cash which made the sex trafficking venture possible providing Mr. Combs with large sums 
And they're saying that the defendants, specifically Lucian, Charles Grange, and Ethiopia Habertum, and all the record labels that are in this lawsuit, said that they were providing vast sums of cash for Diddy, which made the sex trafficking venture possible. Providing Mr. Combs with large sums of U.S. currency caused defendants Lucian, Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habertum, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Groups to receive financial benefits. And it also says their willingness to provide large amounts of cash to Mr. Combs was the quid pro quo for receiving financial benefits. So you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And so it was this mutual beneficial beneficial relationship that's alleged was happening. Saying the cash directly formed part of the commercial nature of the set sets. The cash was also a necessary and required part of Mr. Combs' recruitment of Plaintiff Jones, as well as other sex workers, prostitutes, and underage minors. By providing cash, the defendants, you know, all of them that we just listed, knew who would be used to find the sex trafficking venture. So they're saying if he didn't provide, if they didn't provide all of this cash in the first place, Diddy wouldn't have forcibly used him to go out and provide these sex workers and to pull these people in and to also engage in the sexual acts himself. So I see the line, how they're connecting the dots of how all this works hand in hand together. Let's see. That part is they're saying that this should have raised red flags. You know, the defendant should have been aware that this was not OK and show some concern and raise some red flags in doing this. But they didn't. And they could just continue to support a sex trafficking going on. Uh, let's see if there's anything else of note in here that I want to pull out and share with all of you. I thought there was one more part. I remember reading through this earlier. Just want to make sure before I move on, because I think it brings Cassie back up in one of these clauses. Yep, shared that. Oh, here, it, it, this is part that brings Cassie back up. Let's see if anything new here. I just read it. It says defendants, Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habertum, uh, Merriam, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Group knew through years of lawsuits, hush money, um, through, knew through years of lawsuits, hush money settlements, and notice that was provided by Ms. Cassie Ventura, uh, Ventura at the beginning of 2023 that Mr. Combs was engaging in sex trafficking. And the defendants were participating in particular set in the particular sex trafficking venture, i.e. the coercive comb sex trafficking venture outlined above everything we described up there. So they were saying like Cassie brought this to people in t uh, um, attention and they all knew, but yet they still went forward and they knew about the years of lawsuits that Diddy has been in and knew about hush money that he has provided through the years. But still, they went through with it because it was a scratch your back. You know, you scratch mine type thing. So interesting. That's that's interesting. Connect connecting the dots right there. And this is very detailed. If you look at this, it brings back all everything, you know, it brings Steve, Stevie J and all of them back in it. So going back to the freak offs and the sex trafficking, all that that was taking place that we covered a lot in part two. So it's re-alleging and rehashing all of those things. And then there was one part about that. Then this is the part about Prince here, Harry. So I know that was in the news. So I wanted to read that paragraph just so people hear and know just exactly how it's provided in the lawsuit. And then, you know, you could draw your own conclusions. It says, among the financial benefits that the defendants, Lucian, Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Habertamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group receive for participating in and facilitating Combs' sex trafficking venture, 
were the affiliation and access to Mr. Cone's popularity. Mr. Cones was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Cones sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. So, you know, doing this guy gave them some access to people like a Prince Harry. That's how he's brought in this. Whether or not Harry knew about stuff going on, I don't know. But so, you know, they made that out to be a little bit more than what it was. But that's how he was brought up and mentioned in the suit. And it also talks about like avoiding taxes and getting how large suspicious amount of cash cash were never reported and never reported these sponsorships for U.S. federal um, taxes. And that's what triggered actually. And I read this piece just so you hear from me, because I found this very uh, just so you hear how it's written, because I found it pretty interesting. Let me go to the beginning of the paragraph. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Mr. Combs and Combs Control entity, entities used the sponsorship funds in exchange for defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habertimerium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group facilitation and participation in sex trafficking venture, including its willingness to provide large amounts of cash in suspicious circumstances and to allow their failure to report these sponsorships on their taxes to the U.S. federal government to avoid triggering suspicions of the federal government. So they were talking about how they circumvented like being caught for all this time is because they just simply didn't report a lot of the cash coming in. So that's not going to raise any red flags for the government. So no one's going to go in, you know, if it, and because, you know, the government going to try to take that money as soon as it's recorded. A B, we know about that. The regular people know about that one. So yeah, they they thought they were being quite clever and getting around it. Okay, we're skipping down. It's a bunch of like legal, uh, legal, legal mumbo jumbo that's going on in there, and it just reiterates some different things. Now, there's one piece in here where they made the distinction yes this is it because you know this is beyond just a civil thing we're getting this is criminal so it says this case does not evolve mere fraud instead defendants lucian charles grange ethiopia habitamarium motown records love records and universal music group criminal conduct and violating the tvpa remember that's the trafficking Victims Protection Act was outrageous and intentional because it was in deliberate furtherance of a widespread and dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habertimerium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group's criminal conduct also evinced a high degree of moral turpitude they use some words in this one <laughs> and demonstrated such went uh, went on dishonesty as to imply a criminal indifference to civil obligations so defendants lucian charles grange ethiopia habitamarium motown records love records and universal music groups criminal conduct was directed specifically at mr jones who was the victim of combs sexual abuse and sex trafficking organization they are making sure they are for this is what i gather that they really put in the distinction that mr jones was not involved in this as a perpetrator he is a victim they want you to look at him as a victim along in the lines with everyone else coming out and making this suit which i would imagine the other side might have an argument of i'm just thinking if i was an attorney or something i would try to paint the picture maybe of something him being dissatisfied or something going wrong 
and him trying to demand more money or I don't I don't know what I would do, but I would do a I know I would try to paint him as a participant rather than a victim. So I think they're going they're doing their due diligence to make sure that he is a victim and that is written in the lawsuit. All right, so now we have the 15th cause of action because the 14th is a long one. When I take that one, it's it's a lot of pages, but we are right here at the end. And I think the 15th, if I'm not mistaken, is the last cause of action. But we'll see. The 15th cause of action, obstruction of the enforcement of the Trafficking Victim Protection Act. So all this stuff, they're going in on the sex trafficking. And you can see why the home was raided because these are criminal charges and stuff going on. So a lot of the stuff rehashed that we talked about, but this one is more talking about how the defendants, how they caused harm on Mr. Jones and it directly result, resulted in him coercively being caused to engage in commercial set sets and in other ways. Once again, they are trying to establish him as the victim in this. Like he was doing these acts not out of his own free will. It says defendant Sean Combs has a well-documented history of criminal investigations. The all the defendants we named there were on notice of Mr. Combs' proclivity to criminal activity. They knew or should have known Mr. Combs' sex trafficking operation would or could result in a criminal investigation by state and federal prosecutors for violating the TVPA. It says, on or about the, the date of July 8th, 2019, <clears throat> this was the prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein, says the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York indicted Epstein and unnamed associates for violating, violating the TVPA. Later on, about June 29, 2020, the same office indicted Epstein's co-conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, for conspiracy to entice minor victims to travel to be abused by Epstein. Mr. Combs, defendants, Jake, Justin Combs, KK and her direct reports, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Buon, all engaged in the same activities as Mr. Epstein and Ms. Maxwell. In fact, Mr. Combs defendants, Jay Combs, KK and her direct reports may have done worse. They said not only is KK the Gisling Maxwell to um shot to the to P. Diddy's Jeffrey Epstein. You know, they are even worse than they were. Now, that's what they are alleging. Now, that's a strong charge and pretty deep. So, and then they go on to how, you know, they were able to get, they were able to charge Epstein and all these other people and all these things. And, and they're going through the eerily similarities between the cases and the coercion into sexual acts. That's going to be a interesting argument going on in court. And that's going to be, I think, some lightning rod testimonies whenever those allegations like that come out. Um, here, I don't think there is. Let's see. That talks about. They talk about Cassie a little bit more and her complaints and how she informed members of Mr. Combs' parent company about the abuse. He, while the abuses he was visiting upon her and instead of coming to her rescue, they forced her to return his calls and to return into the sex trafficking enterprise. So that's a, a major claim right there. They're saying like Motown Records, Love Records, Universal Music Group, Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Habitamarium. We're like, whatever, girl, we're not listening to your claims. But in fact, not only are we not listening to what you're telling us, we're going to make you return and go right back into that situation and you go back into performing those set sets and continue that abuse. Okay, I read this part 
it's just a couple of more sets. We are on page 69 of the 73 page lawsuit. Hope y'all are still with me and are following along. So these defendants, it says they were made aware of. Um, oh, wait, let me start. Let me get this from the beginning. I just read this one. It's pretty good. So defendants, Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habitamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group. Lord, they, they are thorough. They made sure they named everybody every time. All right. It says they was they was aware Mr. Combs had a laundry list of criminal charges and barely escaped serving prison time. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs engaged in witness intimidation and bribery to escape criminal liability for shooting the Tanya Rubin in the face. Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habitamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group was aware that there were public allegations that Mr. Combs' illegal conduct was facilitated by several named co-conspirators. They were made aware of this through complaints made by Cassie and the lawsuit by former Diddy sets worker Jonathan Adi. Now it makes me curious to read that one. I, I, don't, I don't even think I read that one. But defendant Lucian, Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habitamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group concealed from state and federal government in numerous cash payments to those co-conspirators. So they just was hiding everything that they knew. And it goes on and it says that, let's see, I read defend the uh, defendants. I'm not going to say all their names again. Continued its affirmative conduct of providing cash to Mr. Combs and his associates so that he could make those cash payments to his co-conspirators. So they was funneling money to Diddy so he can pay the other co-conspirators who are involved in all this stuff with knowledge that such cash transactions did not produce a clear paper trail. So they were covering their tracks. The defendant's intentional conduct obstructed, attempted to obstruct in many ways, interfered with and prevented the enforcement of the TVPA by investigators and prosecuting agencies. So they were working around the trafficking ring so authorities didn't know what was going on. And they said they provided beyond the normal uh, amounts of money and cash. So they at towards the end here, they just they're hammering again that Mr. Jones was done, has received serious harm that is sufficiently serious under all surrounding circumstances to compel a reasonable person of the same background and in the same circumstances to perform or continue performing commercial sex activity to avoid incurring that harm. Excuse me. So this is the part that is the most challenging for me, you know, where I continue to talk like how you think is it's that part of the agency of an adult, like how, like what is that grooming of an adult? How are you forced to do these things? They are making it clear in their lawsuit that the things that were we, that were done, it was serious harm, and they caused physical, psychological, financial, and reputational harm. And the harm was direct and approximately caused by the obstruction and the harm resulting from obstruction was foreseeable. So they're saying like all, don't look at him as someone that was willingly doing these sexual acts, but no, the harm around him, the psychological damage, the physical damage, the threats, all these things, if you were someone in a similar position, you would perform as you were told to do in the same way, out of fear. So that's essentially what they are ele alleging in this lawsuit. And the end, y'all, we are through this lawsuit. So the last two things that is it has as this is my first time reading through a lawsuit it's very interesting where it has a prayer for a relief interesting they use the word prayer so 
I read this. It's interesting. It says, wherefore plaintiff prays that the court enter judgment in her favor and against defendants containing the following relief. A declaratory judgment that actions, conduct, and practices of defendants complain of fear and violate the laws of the state of New York. An award of damages against defendant in an amount to be determined at trial, plus prejudgment interest. So some prejudgment interest in there to compensate plaintiff for all monetary and or economic damages, including but not limited to loss of past and future income wages, compensation, sen seniority, and other benefits of employment. Said, so not only are you going to pay me for what you've done to me and the future, you're going to pay me for the past too, and even for bringing in this lawsuit. An award of damages against defendant in an amount to be determined at trial, plus prejudgment interest to compensate plaintiff for all non-monetary and or compensatory uh, damages, including but not limited to compensation for me mental anguish, humiliation, embarrassment, stress, and anxiety, emotional pain, and suffering and emotional distress. And an award of punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial, prejudgment interest on all amounts due, and an award of costs that plaintiff has incurred in this action, including but not limited to the fullest extent permitted by law. Um, and they say her in here. That's interesting because it's, oh, that might just be a typo. And it says the jury demand is the last thing. And it says plaintiff hereby demands a trial by jury on all issues of fact and damages stated herein. Woo! If we get a jury trial, y'all, this is going to be some salt to watch. So, yeah, sorry if my mouth looking crazy. I should have had some water like it was getting a little bit dry there. But I wasn't looking at a camera. So hopefully that wasn't bothering y'all. Um, That was an incredible lawsuit, an incredible amount of charges. And one thing I forgot to mention and it just popped in my head and I didn't see it as I was looking back through and sharing it in those causes of actions. One of the things I want to make sure that it was clear with the kind of quid pro quo, quo situation, it says it, it had a statement of how Lucian and Ethiopia was able to rise in the ranks of their respective fields as a result of helping Diddy out. So they were able to make their own financial gains, their own career advances in return for continuing to funnel in money and keep, you know, this whole thing going. So there are a lot of allegations out there. Thoughts, 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 thoughts. I have many. Now, after reading the lawsuit, well, before I get into that, here at the end, I do want to make aware there were some recent actions, as we saw Diddy did come back online very briefly uh, since the raids at his Los Angeles and Florida homes. The rapper made his return to Etsy and Instagram on Sunday, March 31st, and he posted various pictures of his daughter, Love, um, of his daughter, Love Combs, and captioned the post happy easter from baby love he's also strongly denied all of the allegations against him his attorneys have branded the lawsuit and their accusations as money grabs and baseless and or sickening it is sickening um and also r kelly and should knight was making news and making their comments on this so just if you're interested r kelly you know he talks to whack 100 out of prison sometimes and he had some things to say regarding Diddy last week. He said that S is crazy. Mother F is out here laughing and making comedian jokes and doing all the other S on the radio and everything else. But they, oh, I could say ass probably. They ass could be nets, he warned whack in the clip below. That's what's so effed up about it. They so stupid, they don't realize the moves that's going on. So he has his doubts regarding the allegations and particularly federal authorities. He says, that's why I don't believe none of the S 
he said on of the feds. You could tell me about Puffy. You could tell you could about anybody in there. You could tell me on the news, the weather, the sky is blue. I'm not going to believe the S because I'm in it now and I know what they did. So, you know. So he's still a legend like his innocence and, you know, framed and all that stuff. And then should night, he had some stuff to say on last Friday where he said it's a bad day for hip hop for the culture of black people, because when one look bad, we all look bad. That's definitely not, that's definitely not nothing to cheer about. I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets of who was involved in the secret room you guys were participating in. So you know they're gonna get you if they can. So they all have their things to say in their input there, as does most of America with this. Now, for me, guilt or innocence, that's not my my job. Like, I'm not, and I haven't heard P. Diddy's side, so I can't make a well-rounded claim. I haven't been able to read anything from his team or know what they're going to put out there. You know, we had, if we get a trial, I will be watching and be able to be informed and stuff then of a more well-rounded opinion. However, what I will say from what I read in this lawsuit, everything ain't a lie. I just, it's, everything cannot be a lie. Like all this from Cassie, all this from other people, all this in this in 73 pages, it's just so much detail. Like, how can you just make this up? So like people, if you think, just this proclamation of innocence, I don't buy that at all. I, that's just me, in my opinion. The degree of everything, you know, it could get a little bit hazy then and the involvement and stuff. However, I do believe the majority of this, what I read, I just personally do. It just makes sense. I'm still divided between Mr. Jones, that victim participation scale of, of justice. I'm just being straight up honest. And it's not to like, and like I said, I want to be clear. In no way victim blame. I understand coercion, force. These things do happen in life and there's an element. I... It's just so hard for me when it gets to those adult ages and less like you got to make a real strong case. You are fearing for your life. And I think they have tried to paint that. And that's why they're bringing up the shine stuff in 99. They're talking about the guns and the drugs and the deals with the local gang leaders and the cops, all this stuff. And I think they're doing a nice job painting a picture of that fear, including things about biting off your face and, you know, the statement of I kill my mom. What makes you think I want to do something with you type thing? You know, it's just like once you get to a certain point, like man on man, it's like if I got to fight you, we're going to fight like I, you ain't making me do this. I you know, it just gets to that point. But I've also never been in a situation where it's that much power, money, and influence. And I know for some people, and we can't say for all people because nothing is absolute. I do not believe that there's just this carte blanche thing where money, power, just rules everything and everybody is afraid or scared. That way, we would have never had a revolution. We would have never had the civil rights in here. We would have never had all those slaves revolting against the masses and doing these things, because there are people who are not afraid to fight back. That's all I'm going to say. So there is in no way where someone just has complete control of you whenever you are a grown man and you have absolutely no agency in the situation. That's something you have to check within yourself internally and have those conversations, okay? Because there's an element of wrong that's obviously on that side, allegedly, of providing that for us but there's all something within you where you gotta you know we all gotta grow into our courage and i have to do that i had to do that i i mean that i was a person definitely a yes person a yes man 
I just sat back there and take it. One of my main critiques on the job, my first job used to be like, you're too nice. As everybody said, you're too nice. And it was using that as a critique not to provoke me or anything further, only up to a certain extent, which was bogus and full of mess because I don't even know how that's a bad critique. But there's an element of truth to that that I had to sit with and as I had to live with for as I began to get older and older and get in more situations, where well, I was like, no, you got to stand up and have a voice for yourself. It doesn't matter if it's the president of a company or your manager or your coworker right beside you. You just cannot allow things to happen around you that don't sit well with your spirit. And it could lead to an outcome that's unfavorable for you. It really could. And I understand those judgments and those things you have to weigh. I don't know. It's choices. In life, we just we just got choices. And this life is short. So I don't I don't believe I'm just going to be honest. I don't believe a full 100 percent of innocence on Mr. Jones part after reading through this, because some of this stuff started whenever you first got signed on to be a producer. I'm like, I'm not staying here. I'm sorry. I can make my way in the industry some other kind of way. Before any of this stuff got started, I would have made a decision to leave. Now, I know hindsight is 2020. You know, all this stuff was going to be going on and what was happening. But you just have to sit with that. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that. People might disagree. Y'all could disagree with me. You can tell me I'm dumb as hell, whatever you want. <laughs> that is just my opinion of how i feel about that i think it's wild though like how this kind of now there's an element of this where it just turned into strict homosexuality things and i've heard some critiques on that which i do agree with that it's kind of wild how that just started being the main focus because it is a part of the lawsuit but there is so much more within the lawsuit that goes beyond that you know, but everything became this focus of like sex party rings and what Hollywood does to you and everybody wants to turn you gay, the boogeyman, blah, blah, blah. No, these are real crimes going on. We're talking about sex trafficking. We're talking about underage girls. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about all these things being done. But we want to reduce it down to some element of homosexuality, which is weird. That's just odd to me. This obsession this obsession that's all i'm gonna say just when it comes to homosexuality is crazy to me um because there is so much more in that uh in this it, you know to this lawsuit i'm wondering if other names will be named what's gonna happen with any of these politicians supposedly athletes things all involved in these parties and if they were participating what to what degree i'm you know, that does spark some curiosity, you know, a little gossip side. We all have our little gossip side and want to know what's happening. I wonder if anything like that would come out in the lawsuit. I think he's going to have some work ahead of him to prove everything that's mentioned. Some stuff I think could be easy because he says there are video recordings. There's audio. He has, excuse me, all that to go along with it. So. That could be very strong evidence going. But apparently in the allegations of Diddy having a lot of bodies and stuff there, you know, I can see. I'm not completely against conspiracy theories either. I'll tell you that there are some conspiracies that make sense to me because we know the how power, money and influence does work. And there is a protection element there. And if that is truly the case, I'm sure people are trying to make sure that stays covered up. Now, what that means, what that looks like, I don't know. But I know the LAPD apparently got some things to answer to with some of these allegations saying that Diddy got y'all brought out. Mr. Muhammad is in with all the police officers anywhere in his um, L.A. home, Miami, New York. All these places, y'all got, you know, it, your your character is in question.
because apparently you have been really good at covering up and and taking hush money and all these things as well for Diddy as alleged. So that is interesting to me as well. I don't know. I'm here, family. I'm, I'm locked in. See if y'all are locked in too. Thank you for taking part in all three parts of this series. I would love, love, love to hear your opinions. I'm glad to see that some people, you know, really enjoyed it and really enjoyed the information. Everything I do won't be as long as this, because, but this was just some good stuff. Um, and probably when it's, I start covering other news outside of this, it'll probably be like 20, 25 minute videos tops, you know, 30 tops probably. Sometimes I like to talk and get going. But please follow the channel, like, subscribe, put your input. Let's keep the conversation going. And let's just, I don't know, let's just, uh, it ain't nobody to pray, whatever you pray, whether you, are a universe healer wherever you sit in your own thoughts we just need each other and these times are they are a lot and i'm not saying like i'm not on this whole like pray for diddy pray for this and that da, da, da. like i hear some commentary about what about his family you read the lawsuit families involved but anyway um everybody got family and stuff to think about we're all in the same boat. Celebrities are not above anybody else in life. They are regular people. They're going to go down in the ground or be burned up if they're cremated, just like you, just like me. And we got to start looking at people like that. Like we can be amazed and support people's talent and be there and have our stands and love them and love what they do and what they can bring to the culture and what they can bring to our lives and enrich us in that way. But Everybody should have a certain moral code. Everyone should have a certain line that people just cannot cross. And when they cross that line, it's like, I don't F with you. No. It's totally fine. Who cares what you did before in life? That's how I am by R. Kelly now. You can talk all that noise about what you want. No. I don't mess with you, sir. But anyway, let's just continue to build each other up when we can and when people need to be brought to justice we bring their asses to justice okay and don't and make no if ands buts or apologies about it we'll see y'all next time on the couch peace out